Hey everyone, this is Fixreef, and today we have this Hydra uh, 26 HD rather rising for repair. It came in uh, with an issue that it's been water damaged, and it's not working. As any of the lights that I have that are, have been water damaged, I don't want to plug them in to uh, cause any kind of additional damage on the inside, and instead I'm going to take it apart. I haven't actually had a whole lot of Hydra uh, water damage repairs in the past on this channel, so I figured um, I will add this for content. Alright, on the surface it doesn't look too bad. So let's remove the connector board. Okay, and this is the inside of the board. I actually do not see any water damage to it. Not on the surface. Um, except perhaps... I'm not sure what's going on with the Wi-Fi module. It's got a little bit of residue, but I'm not sure if this is just flux from when it was put together. Yeah, I don't see much of a damage. However, it looks like there is a little bit of residue. Uh, come on, focus. There is a little bit of residue on these channels. I can see some type of hue over here and over here. Others seem better. The power circuit seems okay. But something's going on here and here. So let's look at it under the microscope. Alright, let's see. Yeah, there is definitely some type of substance here. I am not 100% convinced that this is salt. But you can't deny the fact that there is some type of substance over, over here. Actually, there is more here as well. Yeah, not bad at all. Let's look at the main controller. Main controller seems clean. Okay, what about the Wi-Fi module? They do have some concerns. Not sure what this is, if this is old flux or if this is corrosion. Looks like flux to me. Just real old one. And over on this side. It seems fairly clean. Okay, so I have attempted a couple of things uh, behind the scenes, so to speak. I checked out the original repair ticket, and it turns out that the history of this light is that it was being installed over the tank, it was completely unplugged no power whatsoever, slipped and fell into the water, fully submerged. The owner took the light out without plugging it in, took it apart, cleaned it the best they could, and they did a great, great job. I mean, you can barely tell that this light ever seen water. Um, dried it all up, reassembled, attempted to plug it in, um, and uh, only a couple of LEDs lit up. So this makes a lot of sense now that uh, we've seen some um, remnants of salt um, on the board, but in smaller amounts, because they did a great job cleaning it. So what I did behind the scenes is I tested every single individual LED, just to make sure that all the LEDs actually work. And then I attempted to um, swap a few components around to see where I can find um, or localize the problem. So I took a reference board that I have over here and just used that board with all the other original components, with the Wi-Fi module and uh, the connector board, 
and it kind of worked. I mean, I didn't test it fully, but at least I got to the point where the, the Wi-Fi was uh, showing up in the list of um, available um, Wi-Fi networks and uh, d definitely good colors on the main board, which is a good relief because uh, these uh, Wi-Fi modules are notoriously difficult to repair and impossible to find replacements for. So I think that um, I'm more confident in the, this, this uh, Wi-Fi module actually working now. But I'm not so confident about the main board. The main board definitely shows um, signs of uh, failure. Instead of the typical red light that I would see out of here, I was getting the teal light, which is like a combination of blue and white and, and red, um, which is not a good sign because these this, this LEDs are controlled by the main controller. Who knows, maybe the controller is bad, or maybe the controller is actually sensing that there is a problem elsewhere on the board and just acts up this way. Let's hope that the problem is elsewhere on the board somewhere. Uh, the other indication that there is a controller-related issue is that um, a working Wi-Fi module does not work with this board plugged in. So it's not like it's an individual LED channel failing um, and everything else is working, right? The whole board is completely um, shutting down uh, for the most part. So my next step would be to um, ultrasonically clean this board because it already had water. It needs to be cleaned anyway. We don't know what kind of corrosion and salt we can we get under the uh, larger components here, and it's just it's just a better idea to just clean everything up. So this is going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner. Then it will uh, get dried, and we'll see if it acts differently. Maybe that's all what it needs, or maybe there is going to be more work to do. So let's get to it. I'll be right back. All right, so the board is back from the ultrasonic cleaner. Let's take a look at what uh, what it looks like now. It's, it seems extremely clean. It's almost like brand new. A couple of things here and there, but look, most of the hue, most of that residue from salt is completely gone, and the board looks very, very nice and clean. Well, all right, let's put it back in. Let's uh, Let's assemble everything. And just test and see if we have better uh, results now. So the Wi-Fi module goes back in. I did not clean the Wi-Fi module because it doesn't look too bad, I don't think. Uh, let's put um, everything back in very carefully so that we don't damage the pins on the connector board or on the main board or on the LED clusters. All right, everything is nice and tight. All right, now let's take a look and see if we can plug it in and um, what kind of result we get. And look, it looks like it's working. Can you imagine this? Ultrasonic cleaning actually fixed the problem. Looks like all of the um, LEDs are on, every single one of them. Um, the light is running. I can see and hear the fan spinning on the back. So I think we got it. Yeah, so if we look at the sample board that I have here, the donor board, essentially the damage was on the LED uh, channels. Uh, there was salt creep all over these tiny components. You see how close the um, the pins are. Uh, and so when the, the salt gets in, it, it shorts some of them. And uh, shorting the LED uh, channels is going to cause the main controller to shut things down. Ultrasonic cleaning basically fixed the problem for us. Well, that completes this video. If you enjoyed this repair, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.